Hi, I'm Rob, and in this video, I'm going to show you the team I'm going to use for this Cat Rescue World event. This is an event you do with your guild, so it's really good to take part in this. You will gain a lot of rewards. Um, what I do recommend is collecting these rewards absolutely straight away. And the reason is your guild may have started this event already, and in doing so, will have picked up tokens of rage. Now, when you collect these, this is going to give you a boost to your power. Which basically means more damage. There it is, a token of rage times three. Get to evolve it straight away. And it will ultimately evolve into a medal. Now, when you get one of these, you want to make sure you apply it on your medal set. Oops, what am I doing? There we go. So I find the badge of rage. Make sure we put it in the right slot. There it is. Now we gained extra damage. I'll come back to you later, little Kirby. So back to the event. Now the second thing is good to do is make sure you grab at least the first reward from the shop, which is um, tier one. This gives you a, another token of rage, which is going to help your uh, evolving that into a medal. But as well as that, you're going to gain a potion of enchantment. A potion of enchantment means all your troops in and start enchanted for the start of each and every battle for the entirety of this event and it's a week-long event so that is really good you get four extra sigils every day you do not have to use them up in the same day they will accumulate throughout the week but make sure you know that they do not carry over to the next event you have to use all your sigils in this event none left over are going to carry over so that is really important now on to the team itself uh, there's a few ways you can go about this. Now, I've kept it quite simple. I always like on the early stages to have one troop which does damage to all. It just makes sure everybody's just wiped out on the other side straight away on the first cast. Um, to find out which weapons you've got which do this, you can do this really easily. Just go to your search bar and type in damage to all. On the actual weapon of course and it gives you all your weapons which do damage to all and um, just select whichever one you fancy black manacles is always a really good choice because there's a 20 percent chance to devour a random enemy at the same time i like creeping death as well because it death marks the strongest and weakest enemies and where death mark you have a 10 percent chance to kill the enemy outright or they recover basically it means they've got 50 50 chance of dying or recovering which is pretty cool uh, lots of other choices. There's lower level weapons as well. Death's Grasp, for example. So, plenty to, to pick from there. All do damage to all. Even Wicked Scythe is a decent choice. And that's only a, um, a low level weapon, so... Good choice there. So, um, just get rid of that effect there. There we go. So, the rest of the troops, I've gone for a really simple strategy. Gone for two times a cunning. A cunning deals a damage to an enemy based on your magic level and a random enemy boosted by each enemy's life. So basically, when you complete a stage on this event, the enemy is going to get more powerful every single round. But by getting more powerful every single round, cunning does more damage. Good, eh? And if the enemy uses purple mana, deal double damage. So extra bonus if they use a purple at the same time. And we've got two of these and it gets better. Deal double skull damage versus purple enemies, reduce damage from skulls by 50%, and give four to all skills to all Raksha Rush, allies when matching four or more gems. And we've got two of these. That's going to become give eight to all skills when matching four or more gems. So to aid that, we're going to have the Hellclaw Mage. Creates nine red gems and nine purple gems. Curse and burn the first enemy. By creating a nine red gems, it can self-charge itself because it is red or uses red. And it's going to create nine purple gems, which is going to help charge the entire rest of the team. And every time we get a four match, our skills are going to start accumulating and going up really, really quickly. So that's the uh, strategy for that. If you don't have, <coughs> excuse me, a, a cunning or you don't have two of them, then there are a couple of other troops which are quite handy. Cat burglars, pretty decent. Deals damage to the last two enemies, and if an enemy dies, you get some gold and an extra turn at the same time. That is not a bad way to go. There's not many troops 
in this class that deal damage to multiple enemies. Most of them are like single hit, a powerful hit sort of thing, which can do a hell of a lot of damage, but it's going to be just slower. Like Chigraki Warrior is a really good one. Deals true damage to the enemy boosted by their armor. Like eventually in the game, might be a good idea to just throw three of these into the mix when you start getting that metal enhanced so that damage starts going through the roof. But um, I'm quite intrigued to see how this cunning team will go, especially with that four to all skills. So I've only tried this on one game so far just to get this team locked in because otherwise the game sometimes forgets what team you had, which is really annoying. I'm going for the abysmal banner. Abyssal banner, plus two purple, plus one red, minus one yellow. And the class, Archmagus is absolutely superb for this. Alloyed mystics gain two life. The hero is a mystic. Gain one magic when an ally casts a spell. And gain two a bonus purple when matching purple gems. Gets our whole team charged up nicely and quickly. The talent trees, all purple allies gain two armor. Steal one life from the first enemy when matching purple gems. Anti-magic sphere, reduce damage from spells by 20%. Mana source, start battles with 50% is really, really handy. None of these are actually relevant. You don't want the Doomstorm at the start. There's no giants and we're not using a relic. So that one's actually slightly wasted or completely wasted. Lightning strike, explode one yellow gem on four or five gem matches. We could, we could have an extra purple, up to you. And mystic channel, all mystics gain two magic and life when an enemy dies. Our hero is a mystic. So lots of good things to like in that set of um, talents there so let's jump in the first battles are going to be really really quick just literally charge up the weapon because we've got a 50% start on that as well as being enchanted and just cast and as well as that our um, other scroll rig on this so if I remember I'll put it in the description but it's generally you do it in order of ascension level so mythics first they're the pale blue then ones like asuvius the legendary ones which are orange and then purple and so on so we grab our purple and that was enough because we got the boost from the uh, badge and it does make a huge difference and just remember to pop back and, and grab your rewards every now and again because you'd be surprised how quickly you go up i've already gained another one look since i started this i've only done one fight so as soon as especially when you see you've got some more more tokens to go towards that medal makes a massive massive difference to the to the damage output So this is going to be a really easy beginning to this. When the uh, weapon stops wiping out the enemy in, in a single turn, it's possibly worth moving those two cunning up to first and second place because first of all they have stone skin, reduce damage from skulls by 50%, deal damage, double skull damage versus purple, but also means they're going to be first in line to collect purple, which means that really powerful spell it's going to be ready absolutely virtually straight away. See now, yep, we're still doing it in one hit right now. I do like these new guardians, they're uh, extremely powerful. But they're common, they say they're common, but they don't turn up in the same way as normal common troops do. There's a nice set of purple there. Just going to be wiping them out in one go right now. Really, really straightforward at first. Not a lot to think about. Collected two essences there. You can check to see how your guild is doing at the same time. See what people are collecting. See what they're doing. Collect your rewards if you want to. Major orb of growth. Always worth getting these four matches on these. Not central right now, of course, because uh, we're not not fighting particularly high-level enemies. But it does boost up the the power. 
suppose the way to go to, on this, I've only just thought about this, on this is um, give four to all skills on all Rapture allies with matching four or more gems. The might be a good idea to change the class to the Rapture class on this. Then the weapon is going to go up in power as well, which is going to be a lot better than uh, just sitting there in the first place, not getting boosted. I know later on I said you can actually swap around cunning to first and second place. That would work well. Let's take a look at the benefits of Archmagus against what the Rapture class does. Anyone to do? Storm Singer. Looks like he's about to meet his best friend, never done he? Arms open wide. How you doing, mate? Ain't seen you in ages. Alright, uh, let's see what this does. Didn't do a lot then. Let's cast this just for fun. And then cast our second one. And I thought he's done. What I might do, I might pause this video and jump forward slightly in a minute to show how it does on later levels because at the moment this is just going to be rinse and repeating exactly the same thing as I go all right as the enemy gets more powerful and you stop basically just killing him in one shot with your damage to all weapon it's a good idea to change the team around. That's what I've done here. As I suggested, maybe a good idea earlier, I've moved both Cunning to first and second position. They're pretty good in, in first place because reduced damage from Scars by 50% is good. And they get first dibs on the purple as well, which means they get charged nice and fast. And with two of them, that bottom trait, give four to all skills on all Rapture allies, becomes give eight to all skills on all Rapture allies. And I've also changed myself to a Sunspear class, which is a Rapture class. So this actually gets boosted up by 8 every single four match at the same time. And it'll be the same on whichever weapon you choose. If you don't want to choose Black Manacles, you want to have a Wicked Scythe or whatever, it'll all work pretty much just as well. We have got a Firestorm going in this class, which is not perfect. I'd prefer it if it was more purple, but um, it should sort of work semi well with Hellclaw Mage but what I've seen of this thing so far that spell is not that reliable for creating a four match even when there's even when there's quite a few red and purple on on the screen so not overly chuffed with that geezer there um wait, is it a geezer I just noticed a little um lady dumps there could be wrong about that anyway Hellclaw Mage maybe female who knows someone does Anyway, I'm digressing completely, but yeah, what I'm saying is that may be a changeable troop to something else. Maybe even another cunning who, you know, that could be good. Anyway, on to the battle, because uh, I'm completely off tangent there. So you're still looking for four matches when you can, because that damage will get boosted up across all allies. And obviously we grab purple when it's there. for our team. Right, let's see if this actually works. That wasn't too bad. So now we've gone up to 62 damage to an enemy and that's gone up to 57. So it makes a, makes a very noticeable and worthwhile difference. First enemy is entangled, so I can afford to let them take that and party. Now we can cast our cunnings back to back. Hopefully won't hit the last enemy. Oh, I hit the same one twice. It's the first time it's done that for a while. And our Black Manacles is ready to go and it's been boosted to now 65 to all enemies because of those four matches. And we are done because the first cunning is charged again. 
It can go a lot faster than that. If you're a little bit patient and wait another round or so, you can actually wait for your black manacles to be charged at the same time. These are worth more points, but I'll, this is a high level one, so I'll do this for the benefit of the video. Wait for the potion of explosion to kick in. And grab us some purple. Get some brown. Nothing going on with other colours. This is a bit... There we go. It's a bit better. Now we can cast manacles first. Let's soften them up. Now we cast both our cunnings back to back. And that is it. Obviously this has been aided by the benefit of the enhanced medals you get as you do more tiers. But you'll get that anyway. If your whole guild is doing this kind of thing, then you're going to be picking up those medals anyway. And very useful they are too. Makes a massive difference on damage output. Four match there. Look, we've gone from 54 and 49 immediately to 62 and 57. So let's see if this is enough to start wiping a couple of these out. Not quite, cause she's got spell reduction, but we can get boosted even more. Cast manacles first, and it's just left one opponent, which our cunning can finish off. If you're a newer player and you're doing this, you may want to actually swap something like black manacles for something which has a summon. Um, you can do that really easy, just by looking at the weapons that, that explode. I like to just put explode into there and it brings up a load of the absolute best ones. On the weapons like explode, 35 green gems. You want something that's going to explode purple really. Because you want to um, collect those purple at the same time so emerald blade wouldn't be a bad shout. Explodes a load of purple gems and there's a summon at the same time. This Exploding the purple is going to charge up your cunnings. This is the only reason I don't like a potion of explosion because some, if you wanted blue, if you really wanted blue, that'd be really annoying that it actually explodes them like that and actually ruins that really nice mana surge that was at the beginning there. Right, come on. Hellcore mage, oh, you got an extra turn. That was good. Doesn't always work out. Wow, really good damage. Now yeah, we've just got to get somebody charged again to finish off. We've got Brown anyway, next turn. And that is done. I've got two more. Let's see. 214 level. Vesuvius. Well, not much going on on purple. I suppose we can take the red. First opponent is entangled. So unless they get really lucky and you're really unlucky, they're going to stay entangled for that first round. Got a little boost there, so we're now on 62 damage. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Cast our Hellclaw Mage again now. Hopefully, get the Cunnings boosted. And they will be done. They're still going through the higher level opponents quite quickly at the moment. And we've got one left. Let's do it on King Heliodor. Right, so stingy on the stuff that we require again. Blimey. Oh yeah. Nearly missed that. Our manifold will be ready next turn. Because of the power of the medals, that was enough. Right, so that's the start team at the beginning of the video and this one that I would change around just ever so slightly as the 
enemies get more powerful. Well, there's a the video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, be cool if you hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help. And most of all, thanks for watching. Catch you again next time. Bye for now. Make sure you collect the rewards. Always have a little check because you've got a Orb of Chaos here. Look, what's it going to be? Orb of Growth. I'm going for Orb of Growth. This is my prediction. It's going to be Orb of Growth or Orb of Wisdom, almost guaranteed, but... There it is. Alright, thanks for watching.